the most sincerest of greetings and salutations to my fondest of friends, and the most stern and robust condemnation of my sworn enemy. <laughs> Once again, can you tell I used to be a theater kid? <laughs> so today we're talking about dialogue. Dialogue can make or break your story. If you read a book and there's crappy dialogue right off the bat, you're almost guaranteed to set the book down and look for the next one. Dialogue is critical. Dialogue brings your characters to life or makes them feel like robots. Dialogue makes the situation dire and raises the stakes or leaves you feeling like, yeah, what's the big deal? Dialogue is critical. So here are some rules I follow to make sure my dialogue doesn't suck. And if you follow them and you have a problem writing dialogue, you might just find that after engaging these rules, your dialogue has kicked up several notches. Let's go. Number one, make sure your dialogue fits the character who's saying it. It's critical to have a good understanding of your character, and that's going to allow you to understand what kind of things they would say. I have a character in my own writing that's a noble and for a long time I was having him speak in a very commoner way. He was speaking very much in a layman dialect and after I went back and read my rough draft I says to myself, this guy had a noble upbringing and he disdains common people, he wouldn't be speaking like this and I redid all all of his dialogue and his character was so much better afterwards doing that kind of thing for your dialogue and is is critical making the character speak in a way that fits them can make a character some characters are iconic because of the way they speak yoda darth vader sim not simba mufasa voice and even if it's just an imaginary voice in your head because you're you know, reading words, voice is critical to building a character. And the way they speak on, in, in the quotation marks you give them will affect how your reader thinks of that character. It will make a villain or break a villain. It will make your hero epic and sympathetic and lovable or make your hero a dullard who is a do-gooder and a pansy ass. Your dialogue needs to fit the character. Think about what that character would say in that situation. Which leads to the next point. Make sure the dialogue fits the situation. Dialogue isn't a place to cram exposition. Okay, that's a, that's a whole separate discussion in and of itself, but we're going to touch on it. Dialogue needs to fit the situation. You can't just use dialogue as a place to cram a bunch of world building that doesn't fit the situation. If two people are walking through a garden and one person is giving the other person a lesson on plants, that makes sense. And it might even be tolerable to do depending on how relevant those plants are to the story or if uh, you know there's some greater meaning like there's a metaphor going on or an allegory. But if your characters are walking through a garden and they start talking about plants and then one character goes off on just this insane tangent about the biosphere of the planet and how all these things are interconnected and the history of each plant and how this culture has used them, it's going to feel to your readers like you just had a bunch of world building that you didn't know where to cram anywhere else so you did it in the dialogue and it's lazy and it's clunky and it's not good writing don't do it one more time do not cram exposition into your dialogue and make sure the dialogue fits the situation use punctuation or don't here's the thing about dialogue it doesn't necessarily have to follow all the rules of your language that you're writing in as opposed to the narrative you have to write the narrative in such a way that you're properly communicating ideas and that grammar and punctuation and syntax all allow the sentence to communicate what you're trying to communicate. But dialogue doesn't necessarily have to do that because the dialogue 
needs to fit the character and communicate how that character would communicate. And maybe that character isn't a very good communicator. Maybe the character likes to talk in run-on sentences where there's no real break and everything they say is just kind of jumbled together and they never really stop for breath, so you really never know where their one point stopped and one point began and maybe they're not very articulate, so they kind of, you know, repeat words and do a lot of, like, you know, kind of repeating the doing the Cali girl thing while doing the run-on sentence. You get the point. <laughs> you need to write dialogue like that character would speak it. You don't have to use proper punctuation. You don't have to spell words properly. You don't even have to follow proper syntax because people speak in very odd ways. So if you use that and you apply that to one or two characters, you're going to have a character that stands out and is distinct and it will elevate the whole level of your writing because every time that character is on page, the writer is going to have to tune in to what they're saying to figure out what that character is trying to communicate, and it's gonna give that character a unique identity which is going to place them at a higher spot of importance in the story because characters that have a strong identity affect the story prominently. At least that's how it should be if your story is well-structured. Say your dialogue out loud. You may have heard this tip. It's fairly common if you go to writing advice blogs or watch other people's YouTube videos on how to write, and that's because it's good. Saying your dialogue out loud is a very good way to make sure it doesn't sound absolutely ridiculous. If you can't speak your dialogue and have it sound good, it's not good dialogue. Because the whole point of dialogue is that it's supposed to be spoken. Your pros don't necessarily need to sound good when they're spoken out loud. If you want your audiobook to be absolutely amazing, maybe you write your pros in such a way that they sound good when they're spoken. That's up to you. But the dialogue is not an option. You have to make the dialogue sound good when it's spoken or else it's not believable. And the other thing is, you want dialogue that people are going to walk away from your book and use that dialogue in their life. People quote movies all the time. If you have a line in your book that someone walks away and they quote it for the next 10 years, you've just gained a reader for life. So, make sure your dialogue makes sense when it's spoken. Using a partner for this is absolutely great. If you don't have a close friend or family member that's willing to do it with you, go to an online group, look for someone who's willing to do a video chat with you. If that's not an option, go to a diner or the library and ask some old guy who's sitting alone if he'd like to run through some lines with you. Offer him a cup of coffee and five bucks if he, if he you know, if you feel like you need to pay him for his time. He'll appreciate the human interaction, and who knows, you might make a reader and a friend. And number five. Be emotional. Let that character's emotions shine through. How is that character feeling right now? How should they be feeling right now? Make those emotions clear in their dialogue. A lot of people tend to swear when they're angry. A lot of people tend to emphasize differently when they're angry. Use that, use exclamation points. If someone is asking like a question, use a question mark. It's important to use all the tools of language you have at your disposal to make the dialogue everything it can be. Convey emotion, convey tone, and communicate that character's ideas effectively. Or again, don't if the character is a shitty communicator, but it needs to be a deliberate choice and it needs to be consistent. If the character is a good communicator on one page and a absolutely lousy communicator on another page and there's no explanation in between, that's a poorly written character. So make sure it's deliberate and it's thought out. So those are some basic steps I follow in my own dialogue. I actually do say some of my own dialogue out loud, especially. <laughs> and. I've, I've, I've reenacted entire conversations from my book just because my own writing cracks me up. But making sure your dialogue fits the character, fits the situation, and above all, is believable 
those are the things that will make your dialogue good. And if you can throw a few snappy one-liners in there, maybe a witty comeback or two, that's going to elevate your dialogue to great. So keep that in mind. Don't be afraid to show emotion and be dramatic. After all, that's part of what makes a good story. I'll see you guys next time. If you read a book and there's crappy dialogue right off the book, 